This week on TGC News, Springfield and Rock River get on board the SS Betrayal, a couple of sweet new products, and the NRA has a new president. Tac Pack offers some of the highest quality tactical and EDC gear in a monthly package shipped right to your door. They aren't focused on sending you a bunch of crap. They want to make sure that you get gear you will actually use, featuring things like knives, tourniquets, multi-tools, AR-15 parts, and survival gear. Tac Pack is bound to have gear that you're going to love. And we're switching it up again, so if you order right now, you can get either a free knife or a free multi-tool with the code TGCKNIFE or TGCTOOL at TACPAC.com. Welcome back to TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get into the news, let me just say thank you for the amazing turnout at the TGC panel in Atlanta. I was jaw-dropped that we had a standing room only crowd. It was only the second year and we had like five times the turnout of the first year. It's unbelievable, so thank you for that. I'll be doing another video on the panel later this week to give you kind of a behind the scenes look at what actually happened, the companies that supported and what we gave away and what you may be able to win going forward. Now, the big story this week, Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms are essentially the most hated gun companies in the world right now. Why? Well, according to several reports, they sold out big time. Well, sort of. My understanding of the situation is that a new bill came to vote in the Illinois State Senate. That bill would force people to be licensed at the state level as well as the federal level to deal in firearms. And it wouldn't just affect manufacturers and dealers, it would also affect people that did more than nine gun transfers in a year. And for somebody like me, that, that's a lot less than what I do. Total nonsense for the state of Illinois as per usual, but here's where the problem comes in. A lobbyist for a group called called the IFMA, or Illinois Firearm Manufacturer Association, which is largely funded by Springfield and Rock River, was standing in the way of the bill moving forward, right? As they should be. Well, lobbyists gonna lobby, and the guy from the IFMA essentially said that if you carve out a section of the bill so that companies like Springfield and Rock River aren't affected, then we won't stand in the way anymore. And once the public got wind of a representative of those companies essentially betraying the gun owners of the state, they grabbed the pitchfork and torches, and rightfully so. It is absolutely not acceptable for a gun manufacturer to pretend like they are more equal than others. However, following this debacle, both Springfield and RRA, Rock River Arms, have left the IFMA <laughs> and are trying to distance themselves from the situation. It's a bit convenient if you ask me, but the real issue is that the president of Springfield is or was the president of the IFMA. Regardless of whether or not he knew all of the things that went down, he is absolutely responsible. Claiming ignorance does not absolve someone of wrongdoing. The massive amount of backpedaling after this went down is kind of sad. Now, the bill did pass the Senate, but it did not pass the House yet, so who knows if it'll actually get that far, and who knows if Springfield or Rock River really didn't know about things, or if they did and now they're trying to hide it. I don't know. My stance? They f***ed up big time. Betraying the gun owners in Illinois turned into a nationwide debacle, and they deserve every bit of nonsense they're currently dealing with. Hiring someone that clearly had no idea what he was doing, and then pretending like they're not responsible is pretty sad. We shall see how this plays out in the coming months. What do you guys think? Do these companies need to just rot, or is this a big mix-up? Let me know down in the comments. And in new products that aren't lame news, Remington has joined Mossberg in the it's not a shotgun, it's a firearm market with their new TAC-14. By law, these are not NFA items, and if you want to know exactly how that all works, go watch the AOW episode, whether it's up here, up there, I don't know where it is, maybe in the description of the legal brief, where Adam explains all of that and how it works. Long story shorter, this is a pump-action 12-gauge with a 14-inch smooth bore barrel and a shockwave raptor grip built on the tried and trusted Remington 870 action. I didn't really cover it on the show, but this is a direct competitor with the Mossberg 590 shockwave, which is the same thing built on a 590 action. Are these practical? If you like shooting from the hip, then yes they are. Are they great? Otherwise they're not. Are they a great start to make an NFA item? Yup. And now that there's finally a Remington version, I think I might grab one. And another new product that is 
is really, really interesting is from Ruger. The Ruger 1022 is an amazing gun. It's had many iterations and evolutions over the years, with the most recent significant change being the takedown model. Well, guess what? Now you can get an integrally suppressed barrel for your 1022 takedown from Ruger. This isn't an aftermarket thing, this is from Ruger. You may remember a few months back when Ruger released their own rimfire suppressor. Well, continuing down that path is this, the Ruger SRISB. It's got tons of volume, like a double chamber, so this thing is bound to be ultra quiet. The MSRP is set at $629, and hey, even though that's more expensive than the gun itself, it's incredible to see a classic American gun company pushing forward the freight train of suppressors being normal. And because I feel like it's something that won't get a ton of press elsewhere, I have something that I want to share with you guys. There is a new president of the NRA, Pete Brownell. Yes, that Brownell is now president of the NRA. So why does this matter? Why am I telling you guys this? Well, being that the NRA is one of the biggest pro-gun organizations in the world, and the fact that I am personally working directly with them to try and move the NRA forward, having someone like Pete at the helm, even if it's not forever, is a good thing for the organization. Brownells, as a company, has shown us that they care about content creators, working closely with a bunch of us, as well as folks on social media, and staying close with the beating heart of the gun enthusiast community. It's kind of awesome. And even if the NRA gets a touch of that, just a little bit of it, it'll be a positive thing. Listen, I understand that Colian Noir is a good thing for the NRA, but he is not the be-all, end-all, and will not magically move the NRA forward into the next generation. And I know that there are a ton of you out there that hate the NRA. And hey, I get it. They ask for money all the time. They haven't moved quickly on things when we think they should move, when we think they should move, etc., etc. But the fact of the matter is that you cannot change an organization like the NRA from the outside. This is exactly why I've been working with them. This is why Adam ran for the board of directors. And this is exactly why it's a good thing to have a man like Pete Brownell at the helm. I'd be curious to see if you guys think this is a positive thing or a negative. Sound off in the comments below. Savoie Leather offers some of the finest handmade holsters crafted right here in the USA. Whether you carry inside or outside the waistband, whether you want an extra mag or maybe some extra flair, they have what you need. To get free shipping on your order, use the code TGC1 at SavoieLeather.com. Now for our good guy with a gun story this week, this time coming from Arlington, Texas. It was about 6.15 in the evening a couple days ago on May 3rd at Zona Caliente Sports Bar when a disgruntled customer entered on the offensive, starts an altercation with one of the employees, pulls out a gun, and kills him. It was at that point that one of the other patrons who happened to be carrying a gun took it upon himself to intervene and stop the threat. He approached, drew his gun, and shot the assailant, killing him. This isn't a complex story. But the fact of the matter remains, this CCW holder potentially stopped more loss of life because he was armed and prepared. What would you guys do if you were at your local sports bar and something like this happened, somebody came in and shot somebody? Are you allowed to carry in a bar in your state? I'm interested to see how that works and if you guys know. Also, if you see a story like this that you think needs to be featured here on the show, be sure to send it my way. And unfortunately, that is it for this week's show. You know what to do if you enjoyed this episode. Hit that like button and please share it around with your friends. That helps me out a ton. If you haven't yet, get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.